was it like being a backup singer in the heyday of rock and roll? I mean, you both have have sung with some incredible artists, iconic artists through the years. Was it was it a thrill or what? Tell us no, about it. No, it was a thrill uh, because I was singing with a group, The Blossoms. We were the background singers in L.A. And we were the first black background singers. There weren't any when we started. They had the cute little white girls, and we called them the readers. We couldn't read, but we had wonderful ears. But what was great about it, they respected us as much as we respected them, uh, like working for Elvis Presley. He was so excited about the Blossoms being on his records. Most of the people that we worked for were so excited about us. I said, well, no, baby, I'm excited about working with you. Really? Well, that's great. <laughs> yeah. So it was really opened a lot of doors for it you did. all. Yes. You know, Mary, you were a rayette. For Ray, Ray Charles, Lett, yes, you sang yes. on Carol King's Tapestry album, which is worn out in my house. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Cocker, and then a guy came along named Leonard Skinner, yeah. and you weren't <laughs> so sure you wanted to sing backup for a song called "Sweet Home Alabama," were no, you? No, why? Well, it was a terrible racial time. Uh, during that time, there was a civil rights movement going on. There was Dr. King, and it was it was it, it was the war in Vietnam. It was a lot of stuff going on in the world, and I, you know, I I. Definitely didn't want to sing No Sweet Home, No Alden, Obama. <laughs> As if you would hear the song, I was like singing through my teeth, uh, you know, Sweet Home, Alabama. <laughs> I know, because I really didn't want to sing it, but it was important that I did do that music. And absolutely, and yeah. that song became a symbol. Yes, it did. Of, of racial unrest. That's really, right. Didn't That's it? right. That's Meanwhile, right. Judith, you're sort of the new kid on the block here. How old are you, Judith, by the way? I'm 29. That's 29, our baby. 29, yeah. <laughs> and, and you must look up to both of these ladies so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. It's just, inc I feel so honored to be here on the stage with them. They're just legends, and so it, this has been so incredible. And, and you thought your career was sort of taking off in a big way because you were singing with Michael Jackson yes. on his, his very last tour. And when you look at that, Judith, that must be heartbreaking in a way because everything changed in an instant for you, didn't it? What happened? When he passed, it was just like it took everyone by surprise. I mean, I literally saw him the night before, um, and then the next morning they're saying he had passed, and I just couldn't believe it. It was just like, you go through uh, like so many different emotions. First, disbelief, and you're like, this is not true, this can't be true, and then realizing that it, it's actually real, and the, the grief, and it, it's just, it was crazy. And, and to be asked, though, to sing with Michael Jackson, when you got that, assignment or asked to do that. I mean, it must have been. It was amazing timing just to be able to like, you know, be pulled out of obscurity into this amazing stage. And I was just like, oh my God, out of all people, like I just couldn't believe it. Going